so as we all know, uh, there's still a critical unmet need in the space of intermediate risk non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. Uh, despite the available treatment agents, the recurrence rate that we're seeing in this patient population remains high. And that underscores the need for us to develop newer and more efficacious uh, drugs so that we can prevent patients from getting recurrences. Um, and so that was the reason why uh, TAR-210 was tested um, initially in a first in human trial where uh, a marker lesion for um, intermediate risk NMIVC was left in situ being treated with the TAR-210 agent, which is a drug eluding stent <clears throat> um, that is uh, placed via a office-based procedure inside patients' bladders. And what's unique about it is it constantly eludes ertafitinib, which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor that targets FGFR um, mutations or gene alterations. And as you know, uh, ertafitinib is actually approved in the United States for treatment of metastatic and locally advanced urothelial carcinoma with FGFR2, uh, three alterations after one line of systemic treatment. And that's also been tested in the, um, the intermediate risk as well as the high risk setting using a PO formulation. Um, but the problem there is that um, despite a uh, efficacy signal that was seen on that trial in the Thor 2 trial, there was significant toxicity seen with the PO ERTA, which is not um, different than what was seen in the, the Thor 1 trials, uh, including patients with. Um, metastatic and locally advanced urothelial carcinoma. But as you would imagine, in the intermediate risk NMIBC setting, the patients are less likely to tolerate the toxicities that we're seeing. Because these, these diseases, they're, even though they're likely to recur, they're not really going to progress and lead to cancer-specific deaths. And so um, the impetus behind TAR-210 is really is there an intravesical delivery system that we can utilize um, to try to decrease the toxicity seen with PO ERTA? And um, in the first in human study that we ran, that we participated in, um, we're seeing not only uh, great efficacy with the drug, but also um, the lack of toxicity. So it's very promising. So this is a phase three randomized controlled trial um, that's going to be ran globally across um, multiple continents in 20 different countries. Um, and the study is going to be enrolling patients with intermediate risk non-muscle invasive bladder cancer um, that are low grade, that uh, each has at least one risk factor per, per the IBCG risk factor criteria. So... Um, either tumor that are greater than three centimeters in, in diameter, recurrent tumors, tumors that have been treated previously with intravesical agents, or uh, if the, the, uh, the tumor is um, multifocal. And um, these patients are going to be randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive TAR-210, which is the intravesical device um, that's going to be exchanged every 12 weeks for up to one year um, in the absence of disease recurrence or uh, intravesical chemotherapy, either mitomycin C or gemcitabine um, used uh, with a induction course of four to six weekly dosing, followed by a six to 12 monthly maintenance course. Um, so the, uh, the, the patients will also need to have molecular screening um, in order to qualify. And in order to enroll onto the trial, they need to be found to have an FGFR2 or 3 alteration. And there are a couple of different ways that we could do the molecular screen. First, by the traditional method um, of using uh, uh, tumor tissue samples to inquire about the FGFR alterations. Or, but more uniquely, in this trial, we're also going to be using urine samples that are collected at the start of the trial. Um, and so if FGFR three alteration, two or three alterations are, are found within the urine using a urinary ctDNA platform provided by Predison, um, the patients can also enroll. 
And um, there are also some additional stratification criteria. So the patients are gonna be stratified by whether or not it's a recurrent versus a primary tumor, whether the tumor is diagnosed based off of white light cystoscopy or um, photodynamic cystoscopy. Um, and uh, also the, the type of chemotherapy that's intended um, for the patients to be treated with. The primary endpoint for this study is gonna be disease free survival, independent of um, disease grade or stage. And some of the secondary endpoints include progression-free survival, cystectomy-free survival, cancer-specific survival, and so on. So it's really kind of a comprehensive study um, comparing TAR-210 uh, used in the adjuvant setting against the current standard of care, which is intravesical chemotherapy. Um, to see whether there is increased efficacy at preventing re disease recurrence in this uh, patient population. In this disease setting, multiple, you know, many of the patients are going to have really small volume tumor samples. And as a result, so that really impairs the quality of the next generation sequencing on these tumor samples to derive the, uh, the needed alteration. And as such, uh, there was actually a study that we published um, at GU ASCO this year, looking at the complementarity between the urinary derived ctDNA versus the tissue samples. Um, even though each by itself, we're able to capture about 60% um, uh, positivity, but together, uh, or 60%, um, um, uh, you know, 60% uh, sufficient sampling for the, uh, the next generation sequencing. But together, the two tests um, provided up to 90% of the patients having an adequate sample, either urine or tissue, um, for sufficient FGFR testing. And so, um, you know, that really increases the number of patients um, and also increases the, um, the chance that patients can enroll. So that's the reason why we're choosing to use both the urine and also the tissue. I'm very, very enthusiastic about this trial. Um, and the reason is a couple fold on different, multiple different levels. So first off, I think um, ertafitinib <clears throat> treatment for intermediate risk in MIBC makes a lot of sense. Because in this disease setting, we're seeing that up to 80% of the patients or the tumors will harbor an FGFR alteration, um, compared to only 15 to 20% or so in the metastatic setting. And so moving this treat treatment into the uh, IR and MIBC disease space is really you know, the space that, uh, that it makes a lot of sense in. And for us to have such an agent that can deliver the treatment with so little toxicity seen from the first in human study, you know, I think is very exciting. Um, second off, you know, we all see a lot of these patients in our clinics with IRN and IBC, and we try different modalities of treatment, but the bottom line is these patients will uh, recur multiply in their bladder requiring multiple different surgeries, surveillance cystoscopies, intervesical treatments, um, you know, really not having any effects at all. So having such a platform that can provide um, a, a durable response um, and prevent uh, disease recurrence, but also at the same time limit the number of procedures that are needed to treat and diagnose the cancer, I think is very exciting. And thirdly, uh, really, um, I think for bladder cancer um, has been one of the laggards in targeted therapy. Because of the uh, heterogeneity that we're seeing on the molecular level for a lot of bladder cancers. Um, and I think, uh, so in that sense, having a targeted agent uh, being brought in for um, you know, such a large proportion of the patients that we're seeing with bladder cancer is also very exciting. And finally, you know, the way at which we're detecting these targets molecularly using the urine samples, I think um, certainly sets the tone for studies to come in the future in that I think urine is a really, really rich platform for us to 
perform a lot of the, the diagnostic tests for us to really practice precision medicine. Um, and that's coupled with the Taurus platform on which we can deliver not only Erdafitnib, but we've also seen in the Sunrise trials using TAR-200 to deliver gemcitabine. And in the future, um, any small molecule that we can um, you know, rationalize in delivering for this disease space. So um, I think we're truly at the cusp of delivering precision medicine powered by diagnostics that we can derive from a very easy to access urine sample with a treatment platform that can deliver the efficacy without causing a lot of toxicity. So um, all of these put together, you know, uh, makes me very excited about what the future uh, has to hold.